Hey voters, Anthony Hassler is the internet politician here. Before I begin, do not forget to like and subscribe to keep up to date on new content. We are returning to topics from my political positions document, which can be found on my website. Uh, the website's link is in the description. So we continue with infrastructure. Uh, the government should either maintain or oversee vital systems needed to maintain public safety and health. That seems like a gimme. This means providing paved roads and sidewalks. Uh, I'm kind of iffy on sidewalks. I put it in there because in some neighborhoods they really are necessary uh, for the safety of kids and whatnot. Uh, effective electrical systems, adequate emergency services, effective sewage and water systems, waste disposal. I'm also iffy on because some places do privatize it. So it really depends on where you live. Uh, and also basic methods of communication like 911 systems and such. Uh, this does not mean providing cable television or wireless internet to citizens. I feel like there's a private market for that. I, I want to say Spectrum Cable in this city offers Wi-Fi. Uh, it's not perfect, but if you have a account, if you have an account with them, it is you can like log in and get the higher level internet service. So I don't know if that's a deal what they did with the city or something. Uh, but uh, in certain parts of the city, you can connect the spectrum pretty much anywhere you are, you know, with or without an account. So in cases of government shutdown, employees vital to maintain the operation of essential government functions, such as those mentioned, should be able to receive income relative to the national average until the time the government resumes normal operation. Uh, this income for possible government shutdown should be a small percentage culled from the governmental employee pay. And this was really important during the pandemic because a lot of things, like people didn't know what was happening. Tax tax monies dwindled because people weren't working. Um, it, it was a whole thing and we really need to find creative ways to not only save money, but keep people working. Now we move on to the next topic, which is international. And then we should not be occupying other countries. Uh, it costs too much money and we're getting involved in other nations affairs. Um, the fact that we're getting involved in those affairs, a lot of people do not like, and I, I get stopping wars, but we don't need to hang around. Like the, once the government is established and have their military back in order, they should be able to handle their own selves. Right. Um, cause I mean, obviously we can't ignore everything because if we did that and then a war happens, it is mainly why during the beginning of the 21st century, our economy went from a fiscal surplus of trillions of dollars to, into a debt. Uh, and we're way more than that now. I'm not saying that if uh, an ally is being attacked, we should not help them, but we should not plan to stick around too long after the war is won. You really got, this is a situation where you kind of have to judge based on what's going on. If a, if a government does not want you there, don't be there. Like, I feel like, most of the government needs to be like, yes, yeah, stay, and then you you stay. But when a, a large portion of the government and its citizens are like, yeah, no thanks, maybe you should know that's the sign to move on, you know? Uh, in a bad economy, we should effectively end international aid. So, I mean, if you're going to pull military out, you need to pull money too. Uh, it is at this point we should be focusing on our own nation. Uh, we should encourage uh, the international community to pick up our slack until we can resume offering assistance. Uh, the previous president kind of did that, but we weren't in a place where we really needed to do that. Uh, I feel like maybe my, I mean, compared to his level, my level, uh, I, I feel like we needed to be in a far darker place. Although I also realize that there may be some political motivations to why pulling out of the World Health, Health, Health Organization and aid to a number of United Nations, whatever's, uh, might have seemed politically necessary. But I, I, unless there is a super particular reason, and I don't have one off the top of my head, like maybe a war or something in Europe, uh, maybe we shouldn't be totally closed off, especially when, while we could probably self sustain our, or sustain ourselves. A lot of good product wouldn't get into the country. I, a lot of businesses would fail. It, it, it but we can't do anything without it happening. Everything has a good and a bad side, and and um, it's a whole conversation unto itself that I kind of don't want to get into. But we're gonna move on to internet since we I did mention Spectrum earlier. Um, the government is stuck between a rock and a hard place when it comes to the internet. 
The government must enforce the laws of the nation while at the same time trying not to invade personal rights or dissuade communication. Uh, the DMCA or the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and the Start Privacy Act or SOPA and the Protect IP Act or PIPA are meant as ways to protect businesses online by preventing the unauthorized use of intellectual property rights. The DMCA is rarely contested, but SOPA and PIPA are hot button issues in government. I also want to throw, and I think I'm going to mention this a little bit later, um, throw in their net neutrality, which has been pretty much neutered now uh, because of the last president. And I don't know why the, the new president slash vice president haven't picked it back up, but and yeah, I'm not them. I don't know. Uh, it is a matter of the amount of rights the government gets for enforcement over the internet. Uh, the biggest issue that I see for fans of certain franchises being confused for intellectual rights violators. Um, an example is uh, there's a game called Second Life. And the people who play that game can create pretty much anything they want as long as they you know can do it in 3D and, and put it into the game. Uh, CBS... As a good corporation does, every three years or so, we'll do a internet scrub looking for copyright usage. <clears throat> so uh, Second Life has an online store. So the lawyers who were doing the scrub found that individuals were selling basically lookalikes of items that exist in the real world or in Star Trek particularly. So CBS sent Second Life a cease and desist. Uh, because I was the representative for the official fan club at the time, uh, I had to handle it. And um, negotiations happened and pretty much everybody fell in line based on what CBS wanted. Uh, that is why I believe that under the fair use rule and copyright law, fans should be able to promote a franchise within reason without retribution. What a fan could not do with a Franchise includes using the franchise's main title, names, and imagery or sell merchandise, and they must properly credit their sources. That is what I got most of the, the individuals in line with. Those who did not fall in line were, were removed. Uh, not by me, obviously, by you know, Second Life, because Lyndon does not want to be sued, Lyndon being the owner of Second Life. Another issue on the internet is how involved the government must be when curbing service providers' desire for profit. Uh, this desire includes chucking bandwidth and creating tiered package system, uh, packages uh, in a manner unseen since the 1980s. And I'm talking like AOL, back when they had like different packages for how much time you could be on the internet. Uh, the constant software updates, streaming video and video game multiplayer and downloadable content returning to such limits on bandwidth or time usage would both be greatly profitable to, to the service providers at first, but quickly disastrous for most users. Uh, but the profitability would only be sustained for a short while as users would eventually disengage from the internet and only those who can't afford the cost would continue as uh, the service providers continue to raise prices keep with the loss of users. Uh, to counteract the chances of service providers uh, would switch to bandwidth or time limited service packages, in 2010 the government proposed a national service plan where users could take uh, anywhere. But basically kind of like what Spectrum is doing in my city here. The exact details are unknown to me, but obviously it didn't happen because I don't know what it, if it exists, I don't know where it's at. Uh, but making such an offer has deterred uh, service providers from continuing with their tiered service packages. But then we also talk about the um, Entertainment Consumers Association and the push, uh, the lobbying of uh, net neutrality, which until the, the past, uh, the most recent president, uh, not, not the current one, um, just neutered it. So. Uh, we had that deterrent and we're already starting to see uh, as a result of the pandemic companies kind of doing that tiered thing that we wanted to avoid in the first place well that is all the time we have for today voters uh, remember a good voter is an informed voter who can think for themselves uh, do not forget to check out my previous videos on this channel as well as like and subscribe to keep up to date with new content